Welcome to a video that is going to be dealt with in two parts, all in one video. I have not come without a plan, but that doesn't mean that things might change because this orchid, early in the season, it is confirmed that she has Fusarium. Now, Fusarium is something that an orchid can live with and <laughs> she's been doing quite well for many, many years. However, I have a feeling that the stress has caught up with her, the winter stress, let me be specific. And we are dealing with two separate plants in this pot. She has grown two wonderful new growths out of what you can see is the main body of the plant right here, the larger plant. And I have been waiting and waiting for new roots to grow because I need to treat this orchid. However, in the meantime, she also on her second piece has grown two new growths, much, much smaller, smaller plant in here, but her roots are looking great. Doesn't mean that this little piece right here is healthy. It could still have Fusarium. It's been living after all in the same pot since 2018 when it came into my collection and goodness me, who knows how long until it arrived in my collection. But you can clearly see how Fusarium looks on roots. Everything is desiccated, even though they should be viable and how it affects the leaves. Things are wrinkled. The orchid clearly is not getting hydrated, which means the roots in the pot aren't viable anymore either. What is concerning though, <laughs> is that the big piece is clearly not growing any roots. And for that reason, I'm saying, yes, I have a plan for what we're going to do in this video with regards to my cat Leo Schilleriana. I am prepared because I'm dealing with Fusarium. I've got my bleach solution. It's a 50-50 ratio of water and bleach. I have my media and new pot ready for the little piece of the Schilleriana that I hope to take out without destroying the roots. But once that is out, who knows if that's going to work out and we may have to do a massive U-turn with our planning, but we'll discuss all of that throughout this video. And I have my Faisan 20 concentration ready because I am going to try and soak the bigger piece and see what is going to be growing if anything, as far as roots are concerned, out of the basis of the new growth. So we'll be peeling back sheaths as well. And that is why this intro is so long. I needed to explain all that to you just to make sure that you are interested in this video. And I hope you are. Join me for the journey. It's gonna be interesting. Unless, of course, everything goes according to plan. And then, woohoo, it's gonna be a great video either way. So thank you for being here. Let's start. Oh, thank you so much for staying. I appreciate that. You're still here. It's good to have you. Now, what we're going to do right out of the gate, first of all, is take out our cattleya from the pot and then try to separate the what looks healthy part away from the not so healthy part. And then I'm going to soak the not so healthy part in a bath of Faisan 20, submerged as best as I can, while we deal with the what looks to be healthy part. Hoping by the time that we are done with the healthy looking part, that the sheaths around the base of the not so healthy part have softened enough so that we can start to peel and see if there's any movement at the rhizome, if there is any chance of new roots coming, because if not, the not so healthy part is leaving the patio. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> Let's fill our container with Faisan 20. This is three and a half liters with 15 milliliters of Faisan 20, which equates to one gallon of water and one tablespoon of Faisan 20. In goes the tag as well. The bleach is for my hands and my tools, should I need them. What I'm going to do with my lecker is soak it in bleach as well. 50-50 ratio of bleach and water. This is not going to just suffice to just boil it. And seeing as the orchid came out so easy peasy, it's very, very clear what is going on here. <laughs> Hopefully the separation is easy peasy as well. Bad angle, let me get you in a bit closer. Now I have dealt a lot with Fusarium, so it's not like I'm all panicky about it. It is what it is for the orchid hobby and we either grow with it or don't even bother, but you know, there's no room for complacency when it comes to working with an orchid that has Fusarium. So 
Everything here is ready to go and will be treated, bleached, disinfected when I've finished. That is the plan here. Everything is either prepared for what we're doing and or prepared for what we have to do afterwards because nothing is going to touch this tray. Nothing's going to touch my tools until they haven't been completely disinfected. So this is what we have as a supposedly, hopefully, somewhat healthy looking <laughs> Schilleriana. I've been here before with my Aclandier and she failed. She left the patio this season in 2023. So let's just say been there, done that. We're gonna stay positive. We're gonna hopefully have some roots that are going to do the job, but we are a long way away from seeing any kinds of blooms on the patio when it comes to Cattleya Schilleriana. I was really hoping that this piece would be the one. Now, because this is probably infected as well, as is this one, it really doesn't matter how I handle things. So for the sake of the big piece getting disinfected, I'm putting it totally submerged into the Faisan solution, which is something I really should do with a little piece as well. However, the little piece is so volatile that I'm not entirely sure it's going to be able to handle the concentration of the Faisan 20, which could burn the roots, etc. So we are gonna just have to roll with what we've got and see how it goes from there. It is interesting to note though that, you know, the roots are viable, <laughs> but A, they are aerial, very difficult to be able to hydrate them in a very dry climate, even though I had high humidity this summer without compromising the tender structures of the new growth. So it's a catch 22 with this one, but at least there is some hydration. If that is room for hope, I don't know. Because of this Cattleya Schilleriana, I have a Phalaenopsis Schilleriana because when I made the order, the nursery actually thought I was looking for a Phalaenopsis Schilleriana and, well, <laughs> I wanted a Cattleya Schilleriana. It's a shame that after all these years, we've come to this. Quel dommage. Anyway, now I'm going to clean everything off, put her away. This should take about 10-15 minutes to soak. As per instructions, for me, it's about how long will it take for the bracts to soften for us to peel them. So at this point, I'm ignoring the instructions. I'm just going with what I would like to do afterwards. Positive side effect from this whole thing is we're eliminating another broken pot on the patio. <laughs> always a silver lining, always a silver lining. Wiping down my tray with the bleach solution so that we can work with the next piece. And yes, every step needs this. <laughs> my secateurs, my little snips are already soaking in the bleach solution in case we need them. The only good thing I can say about this is that it was a separate piece. Like I said, hope, teeny tiny bit of hope. And again, clean and wipe and disinfect because now it's time to pot up that little piece and we don't want the pot touching anything that could be compromised. At least for our peace of mind, we do the best that we can. Whatever these teeny tiny little spores can do that we cannot see, that is also something we don't have under control. But disinfecting, we do have under control. Some and Greycoids vacated their orchid tops. <laughs> Here we go. We have a new occupant, at least for the time being. Let's see for how long. And we have a little basket. Media of choice will be chunky, medium-sized lava rock. This little basket was once occupied by a Tolumnia. And what I want to actually do is feed that root tip into the gap of the basket so that it can grow out. But I may need to cut the basket just to make sure that I can get it to do what I want it to. This way, I avoid, whoa, don't break the leaf, Nina. This way, I avoid having to put in a support, fiddle with the tiny little structures at the base. There's another root right there. Little tiny root tip. Um, maybe I should cut another bit out. Oh, we'll see what it does. You see how sturdy now that little... Shilleriana is in her little basket. I can shake it. She's not moving. So with that, we're just going to put lava rock in for humidity retention when we need it, because I am not going to be blessed, I don't think, with such high humidity in the coming years. 
So we've got a kind of a mounted scenario going on because yes, I was contemplating mounting this little piece, but you know what? If this piece dies, then the mount is history. I can't reuse a mount and cork is expensive. So I'm going to just do a go with lava rock because that I can sterilize and bleach and use all over again. I don't have to throw it away. And for that reason, I'm doing sort of a mounting scenario, similar atmosphere, except it's in a pot. Very airy, lots of humidity, round when I put the water into the dish, and then see how the orchid performs or doesn't perform. And if she collapses, well, at least we tried, but at least I have my pot, my utensils, and I'm not wasting anything. And now all that's left is to wedge her into position. Every time I do this, the game of Tetris comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a little wonky, no? That's it. I'm just going to fill up with water and then let the orchid figure it out. We've done our part. Let's put it that way. I've got that root tip in my sights. And for the time being, she's going to go back on the shelf where she was living just because it worked there for her very well. She really grew well in the blooming alley, but my winters are too cold. The setup with Lekka and self-watering could also have been a factor with the evaporative cooling. However, I did have a dryer, if that makes sense, semi-hydro setup for her because I only used large Lekka. The lack of light is extremely stressful for a high light loving orchid, which Cattleya schilleriana is. So yes, you want your Cattleya schilleriana to have a bit of anthocyanin on the leaves because that means she's getting adequate light. So these factors for four months of the year, meh, I am not entirely sure that it was my Lekka and self-watering. I do believe that there's two major factors this orchid does not get during the winter, but let's see what she does now. You can see she's in her little basket. It's not exactly straight, but it is solid. It'll do. She is not going anywhere. She will definitely not blow out of it, that's for sure. Now, let's see if the bigger piece, if we can start fiddling with that, because I'm going to be contaminating everything again on my catch tray. <laughs> and here it is. Let's see if it has soaked long enough. And while we go on the road of discovery, <laughs> seeing what we're up against, would you please give this video a like? I would so appreciate it. I really would, as well as if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Your vote of confidence would be so welcome and appreciated as well. If you've got anybody that you know who might also find difficulty dealing with orchids that have fusarium, then go right ahead and share this video because this could help them as well. The only thing I'm seeing so far on the first growth is the eye for a new growth. Now, while I always say as long as it's green, I'm not throwing anything away. Let me get you down a little bit closer. Anything that is green, I'm not throwing away. When it comes to Fossarium and no new root activity and the leaves are already shriveled the way mine are, then unless I put her into a water bath every single day, there's no chance in bringing this one through. Heading into winter, all the little pointers I've just mentioned earlier, that's, it's just not going to cut it. So if I don't see any root growth here now, I may just hold on to her because I've still got warmer temperatures. But if it comes to November time and she hasn't grown any roots or she is really, you know, starting to lose leaves and desiccate further, then she is going to go into the bin even though there may still be green on her. Because these new growths, they were growing beautifully. There was no stress during a time of year that was perfect for her. So her not growing roots, mm, that is a concern. I can't stand the way Fusarium just makes everything dissolve at the base of an orchid. It is the most ick kind of yuck gunk that stays around the rhizome thanks to the Fusarium. So here's the thing. If what you're seeing here with regards to very shriveled pseudobulbs and you see sort of this sort of black disintegrating gunk 
also coming off your orchid and you're not entirely sure whether your orchid has fusarium, please don't panic just because an orchid has wrinkled pseudobulbs or has wrinkled leaves or has no roots doesn't mean it's got fusarium. So if you are in doubt but you're seeing some symptoms that kind of match what you've seen in your collection and would like confirmation on then i'm going to link a form in the description that you can fill out you can send me pictures there of your orchid and all relevant details about your media your grow environment etc but most importantly you can send me pictures and i will analyze your orchid and then we can troubleshoot together so don't go and think that your orchid has fusarium if you see any parallels with what you're seeing structure-wise, leaf-wise, disintegrating rhizome areas-wise. <laughs> Unless you cut into your rhizome, you won't exactly know it is fusarium. But I don't want you to go chopping into your orchid. So if you want a confirmation, if you want to troubleshoot together, check the link in the description. Orchid ninjas get the speedy VIP response. So if you are not an orchid ninja and you would like to become one so that you can get the benefits about this orchid form detail or everything is described in there then become an orchid ninja and let's have a look at your orchid and it doesn't matter even just for this video any orchid for that matter Oh goody, she disintegrated into three. Yes, I am counting anything that fell off that was dead because that is a classic sign of the disintegration of Fusarium at the rhizome. But now I have two pieces that have viable roots. So <laughs> here we go. What am I gonna do with them? I'll be right back. I need to think about this. A few moments later, like I said, I still have some weeks of warm temperatures. Let's see if she grows some roots. Let's see how she will respond to future treatments with Fysan 20, because I can submerge the whole orchid top in the concentration of Fysan in order to keep treating her, which will be once a week from here on in. So this is what we're going to do. <laughs> I just can't jump over my own shadow. Okay so tempted just to toss her but <clears throat> we are not in january so my frame of mind is not there we are going to do exactly what we did with the other piece put her in orchid top a larger one fill her with lava rock and then monitor at least get the roots into some media where i can hydrate them and then see what we can do from there on in my focus now is not on aesthetics it's on where are the viable roots as in this piece only has one. <laughs> and how am I going to get them to touch media? That's all there is to it for this instance. Ooh, that was still very dusty. Now, you may be going, oh my goodness, what is she doing? She's always with water, protecting the velamen, etc., etc. That was harsh. That bashed the velamen. And let me tell you, these are rock hard roots. They were aerial for a long time. So the velamen is tough as nails. There's no need to be submerging anything in water and making sure that it's okay. I could have been a little bit more gentler, but it really doesn't make any difference here or there because they are really tough. And they are not the kind that just snap. That's what I noticed while I was cleaning the orchid up. Just feeling the characteristics of the root system. What can I get away with? And I could get away with this. I may need a little bit more lava rock just around the back here because there is one viable root in that vicinity. So <laughs> be right back. All right, methinks that's good enough. All the leads, if the roots were to come, there's one right here. We can observe that. There's another one right here, left a hollow there. We can observe that. The viable roots are touching media, so I'm able to hydrate them just by either pouring any kind of nutrients into the pot or just having it at the base. They are to a degree long enough. I suppose I can get a weak solution of nutrients onto them. And while it's still warm, I can also overhead mist, do like a foliar spray while it's still warm. We'll see what happens. Nothing against the nursery. Absolutely nothing against the nursery. Not in this case. In another case, yes. Now, 
Because this one is really, really sus, I am not bringing the other one anywhere close to this one. But I did take a picture. She looks cute in her little orchid top. And she's back in the blooming alley where I can monitor the progress. And this one will also go into the blooming alley, but on a lower shelf where I can monitor the progress and where I don't think any splashing or anything like that will affect another orchid because we do not want to cross-contaminate anything here. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Remember, please, to give it a like and subscribe just to follow the journey for the remainder of the warmer season and see what she does. And if not, then at least we have orchid top to sterilize and we have lava rock to sterilize. We're not throwing anything away, uh, minus the orchid. Let's see if it doesn't have to come to that, though. Please direct any of your questions, personal observation, experiences with Fusarium into the comments. Would we really appreciate to hear what you have to say? And in the meantime, thank you so very much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. I love working with bleach. It makes the nails so nice and clean. <laughs>